Aside from the obvious need of a camera and a lens in order to make videos, there are two pieces of equipment that you definitely need in order to make good videos, and those are an external microphone and some kind of stabilization device. Most people starting out probably spend all their budget on a camera and lens and don't really want to be shelling out another thousand dollars or more for a high quality tripod and camera mic. And that is where this Joby Pro Vlogger Kit that Joby sent me to try out comes to the rescue. Now this setup is $400 and gets you the Gorillapod 5K as well as the Wavo Pro shotgun mic for on top of your camera. Now this is an extra windscreen we have for it that can slide off and then you got your standard shotgun mic right there. There are a couple of other options available with the skilled vlogger kit coming in at $300 and the real time vlogger kit for $200, all of which are linked in the description. And those are good options if you have a really low budget, but for me, this pro vlogger kit is the way to go because I bought my first Gorillapod about four or five years ago and I use it just as much if not more than my expensive filmmaking tripods simply because there are so many different applications for it. Of course, you can put your camera on top of this thing and go around vlogging since it is designed to be a vlogger type setup and it does that very well. So I'm gonna show you how often I use this in all kinds of filmmaking scenarios in my actual short films and my YouTube videos. First off, I travel a lot for my job and record a lot of my YouTube videos for my fitness channel in hotel rooms. So having this Gorillapod available to quickly set my camera up on a desk and start recording is a must. I can easily pack it in my suitcase or I can put it in my camera backpack or even fit it inside my shoulder camera bag and be ready to have a quick stabilized setup anywhere I go. Before getting my first Gorillapod, I actually packed a travel tripod in my bag that was not easy to set up and added a lot of extra weight. And of course there are times when an actual tripod would be ideal, but I can almost always find a way to make it work with this Gorillapod. However, when it comes to more filmmaking scenarios and having stable handheld shots, I love using this Gorillapod as a shoulder rig that makes stable shots a breeze. You simply extend one leg out and put it on your shoulder or against your chest and extend the other two legs out in front of you while bending the ends down toward the ground to make handles. And you're good to go with getting even more stable shots than you'd be able to do going strictly handheld. And there are many times that I use this thing to mount one of my smaller LED lights to set up for my film scenes. In my most recent short film where we recreated a Bluey cartoon episode with the kids, I had all my large lights set up how I wanted, but I still needed a little extra light as a key light on me since we were spread across the room. So I just screwed the mounting plate into the bottom of my little LED and it worked out perfectly for the look that I wanted. And another scene in that same short film was a family conversation taking place in a vehicle. I had a camera mounted on the dash, but because of the angle of the windshield, I wasn't able to put a mic directly on the camera that I was using. So I was able to use the bendable legs of the Gorillapod to secure the camera to the center console in order to get the microphone placed right where I needed to get that good audio from us in the front seat. I've also used the Gorillapod to mount external recorders and microphones microphones in more obscure places that would have been much more difficult to do otherwise. And something else I really enjoy while traveling is getting time-lapse shots of scenic places and famous locations. And because of the flexibility of the Gorillapod legs, I've on many occasions wrapped the legs around a fence or a railing or even tree branches at times to get just the right angle for the time-lapse that I was wanting to capture. And because of the strength of the Gorillapod 5K, I had no doubt whether it would be able to hold my camera set up and keep it safe from coming loose and falling to the ground or even worse, a river in some situations. It's called the Gorillapod 5K because it can support up to five kilograms or 11 pounds, which is a big deal for me because I typically shoot on my FX3, which I'm recording with right now, with this 24 to 70 millimeter lens and an external mic on it, which puts it over four pounds, and that gives me plenty of room to add on more equipment if I want to the setup. The Gorillapod 3K that comes on the other vlogger kits would still be able to support this setup with a payload capacity of 6.5 pounds, but I like knowing that my experience expensive camera setup is not pushing the top limit of the 5K and will be much more sturdy than when on the 3K model. So let me know down in the comments what your camera and lens setup is and I can help figure out what would be the most ideal setup for you. Aside from stabilizing your shots, one of the most important parts of filmmaking is having good quality audio because people are much more forgiving of video mistakes like maybe some focus issues or some bad framing but when it comes to bad sound people will notice this immediately and it will make your video look very low quality even if you have high quality imagery and in this pro vlogger kit we have the joby wavo pro which has some cool features like active noise reduction a second external mic input and app control from your phone so let's listen to some sound tests so that you can see how much of a difference this microphone makes over the built-in mic that you'd be using straight 
straight out of the camera if you didn't have an external microphone. This is just the camera microphone. Once again, far away, it's not gonna sound good at all, but even as you get up closer, it's gonna improve, but it's not gonna be like how it sounds if you have a nice mic on there because all you have are these three tiny little dots on the front of the camera for the microphone, which aren't ideal for this, they just pick up sound. When you're far away, it's not gonna make a huge difference, but as you can see, when you get closer and closer, just like with any microphone, it's gonna sound better. And you know, this type of distance as if when you're vlogging or something like that, I'm arms reach from the camera, it's gonna sound a lot better. But let's do a little test here to see if you can hear the focusing of the lens as I'm moving around since the microphone is built into the camera. Seeing if we hear any focusing. Let's turn on the active noise reduction. Do it again. But then also tapping here on the Gorilla Pod, those types of things are gonna get picked up pretty easily on the onboard camera mic. Let's say you're gonna zoom in and out. All that movement on the camera is probably gonna get picked up by that onboard camera mic. Whereas a mic like this, especially with active noise reduction, it's gonna fix that. Bump the tripod a little bit, the camera, see if the microphone's picking up any of this. Because when you are vlogging, those little bumps and things like that, holding the camera, moving the zoom ring around, that kind of stuff, that was my seat. That kind of stuff will get picked up by the camera microphone. You can hook up the app to the microphone here and control lots of stuff, so, you have the EQ you can turn on and off, the active noise reduction you can turn on and off, and as far as the EQ goes, you can come in here and edit it and make it how you want. There's presets, so say male voice for me, load that, and when you look at the EQ, you're gonna see there's the low cut filter, equalizer, boosting up the higher frequencies, cutting down some of the lower ones. If you don't like that, or you wanna do your own, you can do similar stuff, put a cut filter, change, where you want it, 50, 60 hertz, something like that. And you come into these individual frequencies, like say I want around 500, a little bit of a dip. You can make it wider or more narrow for that frequency range. And then I wanna boost over here around say 2000. We're gonna bring the gain up some there and I wanna spread that out a bit like that. And that's my equalizer and you can go in here done you can save your own settings in there so that's pretty useful and just have this as a monitor to look at for when you set up your camera if you're going to do a youtube video like this or vlogging you can easily see how your levels look there if you don't have another way to monitor them but something i don't really like about the app is that if you click on the menu or you click on the play button to watch one of the videos you recorded it's going to do this and disconnect from the camera so all of a sudden it can't find the microphone when you go back out it's going to take five to ten seconds for it to reacquire the bluetooth and set up so that's a bit of a pain at the same time this is kind of a convenience thing so when you're setting up your camera you can make sure the levels are right set your eq how you want and be more precise with it so it's useful for that but if you're just pulling the camera out and vlogging and the settings are already saved from what you did before, it's not really gonna matter. You don't need the app to be able to use the microphone every time. This is just more fine tuning what the microphone can do for your situation. So as you can see from those tests, it definitely improves upon the audio that you would get straight out of the camera. And even though it does have great features like the USB-C input for convenient charging and a second external mic input, there are a couple things I think could be improved. I don't really like that the input cable that comes with it isn't a 90 degree connection. I didn't have any issues when pairing it with my Sony cameras like the a7 IV, the FX3, or even the tiny ZV-E10. Those screens could move around no problem around the cable because of the placement of the mic input on the camera. However, when pairing it with the Canon R50, I could not rotate the screen without moving it back away from the cord, flipping the screen, and then moving it back out again. And because of the placement of the straight angle connector, the mic cable was covering the top part of the screen. A 90 degree cable would still interfere with the screen rotation, but at least in that case, the cable wouldn't be covering part of my screen that I'm trying to monitor for my video. But those are simply preferential things that won't actually 
hurt your filmmaking video results. And this Joby Pro Vlogger Kit is definitely a great setup that will help you with vlogging, making YouTube videos, or just filmmaking in general. If you have any questions about the products or about filmmaking in general, post them down in the comments and I'll try to help you out the best I can. But if this video was helpful, then please help me out by hitting that like button and remember that I have a lot of videos on the channel teaching things like lighting, framing, and more to help you get that cinematic look to your videos. So go check those out and I'll see you soon.